On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1974. We're going to be taking a look at Redbone, and they're going to be performing Come and Get Your Love. Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus, and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So, let's get the guys up on screen and see how they get on. I'm just going to jump in here. As always, the link to this video is going to be in the description below so you guys can watch it the whole way through without me interrupting it. But with Redbone as a band, the sound that you get is so similar to that original record because of the fact that they have four vocalists in the band. And when we go to the call and response parts of the song, we get that full sound that you would get on the record. And sometimes if a band only has one singer and a lead singer who harmonizes with himself and sings any crowd parts where it sounds like a lot of people are getting involved, those would have to be multi-tracked. And it's such a great live representation of that original record. I know that we don't have the piano in here, obviously there are elements missing, but you don't question it at any point because of the solidity. And it is one of those songs that you can't help but nod your head to and get into that groove because that is the foundation of it. The drums and the bass just lay that down. Also, we've got the guitar layered in there. We've got two guitars here. One of them is playing the higher voicings of the chords 
and we will be getting into that, breaking it down a little bit, showing you guys what the chords are, but it really does complement the other guitar parts that are being played. We've got Lolly here who is singing and playing at the same time. I mean, they're all singing and playing at the same time, but I'm talking about the lead vocal. So having that second voicing means that you're going to get a fuller sound than if the two guitars had the same chords being played on them in the same positions. Just to bring in Pat on bass, because that is Lolly's brother, and it's Pat and Lolly Vasquez Vegas, but they did shorten that just to Pat and Lolly Vegas when they were playing and gigging early in their career. And they did change to the full band format inspired by Jimi Hendrix, who was part Cherokee, and it was that inspiration that led them to having the full band. Just to mention as well that these guys were the first Native American band to have a number one single internationally and also this track got to number five in the USA, it sold over a million copies so it was massively successful and more recently on the film Guardians of the Galaxy you might recognize this song from there and that was obviously on the soundtrack and the album, the soundtrack to that movie got to number one in the charts. So that was massively successful in its own right, but did put a lot of attention on Redbone and people then checking out this song. So vocally across the board here, the guys are nailing it and Lolly with that lead vocal, always rock solid. And talking about the composition because We've fundamentally here only got four chords and just great vocals and just a great groove as well. And sometimes that's all you need, just a catchy melody and three or four chords. The other thing about this song is that we're straight into the chorus. So you're immediately hooked in to that melody. And as you can tell, I've got the guitar out. I'm just gonna show you the chords because it's just four chords, but with a really important variation in the chorus. And also we have little lead parts as well that break up the song so that you know when you're ending the chorus and going into the verse. So we'll cover that. We are starting with an E minor. And if you're watching the way that Lolly is playing his A chord, he's barring over with his A and using that first finger, and then we're playing a D major seventh. So, we get a really interesting sound. And then the final chord is gonna be a D over a B. And just to explain that quickly, it's a D chord, and this is something that you'll see Lolly playing as well. It's quite hard to make out what he's doing, but he's playing the D with his second, third, and little finger at the top of the guitar to get that, and then placing in a B note as the root note. And you get that sound. Something I do quickly want to mention is that in the chorus, we do change chords. And if I was to play this chord to you, You'd probably think that it doesn't sound very nice, it's dissonant, meaning not harmonious, and this is the chord that the guys changed to in the chorus. The most important thing to know about this chord is that it is a diminished, and a diminished chord is one that you use as a transition. You're not gonna spend lots of time on this chord. You get from one chord to the next chord, maybe with this chord in between, in order to make your final chord sound more resolved or more like a home bass, and it can be used for many different reasons, but the important thing to remember is you're not gonna see loads of mainstream pop hits that have these chords, diminished chords, follow each other all the time. So getting back to this song, it means that we have our E minor, and if I put the melody of the vocal over the top, Come and get your love. And I'll do that again. Come and get your love. Now it makes sense, even though when you first heard the chord, it probably didn't because it wasn't in context. Just for reference as well, in that chorus, we do end on the same chord as we have in the verse, which is that D shape with your second, third, and little finger, and then supplying that B root note at the bottom. 
Just to quickly turn the attention to Tony Bellamy on rhythm guitar here, who's playing those higher voicings, just to take you through what he's doing, because he's playing the higher versions of the chords that you get down at the bottom that we've just been through. So our E minor, he also focuses on putting in that rhythmic element, really exaggerating that, but also just playing the top ends of the chords. So with our E minor, which you'll find on your seventh fret, we've got this full bar chord, but focusing on the high strings. So we've got this. And then we move to our A. And then our D. And then that would be a B minor seventh if I was to play through the whole chord. So sticking it all together, it means that we get this sound. And you start to get the idea. And you can see as well that we're really exaggerating that groove and that feel of the song with the upstrokes, the And all of those upstrokes on every other chord really help to cement that groove, but also complement the other guitar which Lolly is playing. Also, just to reference something that I said earlier about having a little riff that helps you to determine whether you're in a verse or a chorus, and we have that from Tony coming in. And it sounds like that, and that's just literally barring, I think sliding up into the bar on the 12th fret. And then just alternating that picking up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down. So you can work that out if you want. And that was just 12, 10, 7, and 5 for your frets. And just bar across the high E string and the B string. Just before we get back into the video, we also have this other riff that breaks up really nicely as well, which is... and then we'd be back into the chorus at that point. So let's get back into the performance. There we have it. What a great live version. The way that the harmonies are spot on the whole time. I think with this kind of performance, there are a lot of things that fly under the radar because you just start getting into it. And there is such infectious energy within the performance, but within the song as well. Just talking about Lolly's voice. He's got such pitch accuracy the whole time, which of course with guys harmonizing with you, you need to have, but also the other guys have to nail it every time as well. But we are gonna get briefly into the history of the band. Also just to mention that in this performance we do have Butch Riera on drums, because I haven't mentioned him yet, but we'll be focusing mostly on Pat and Lolly because they are the brothers and they are where it all started. 
So they moved to Los Angeles in 1959 and they played and gigged for around 10 years. And before they became well known, they did play on other artists' records as session guys, and we're talking artists such as Tina Turner, Sonny and Cher, James Brown, Little Richard, Elvis, and all of those people you can find on the channel here somewhere if you want to check them out all independently. In the mid-60s, they released an album which consisted of half cover songs and half original material, and these guys were always writing in the background in the 60s, and Pat wrote for Aretha Franklin, amongst other artists, but from this early album that they did release, they had some success. They appeared on the Shindig TV show repeatedly, and it was the mid to late 80s that they then became inspired by bands and guys such as Jimi Hendrix to go down that full band route. So in 1969 is when they signed their deal with Epic Records, and they were then known as Redbone and released their self-titled first album in 1970, the next year. At that point, it was Peter DePoe on drums and not Butch, as we have in this video. In 1971, they released their first real big hit single, and that was called The Witch Queen of New Orleans. Just for reference, that got to number 21 in the charts, and fast forwarding to 1973, they released Wavoka, and this was the album that this particular song comes from, and Come and Get Your Love got to number five, as I said before, a massive hit. In 1973, they released a song called We Were All Wounded at Wounded Knee, and I'm sure all you guys know about the Wounded Knee Massacre, and if you don't, you can look it up. But that song got to number one in the Netherlands, but it didn't chart in the USA because it was initially withheld from release because of the subject matter of the song. When it was finally released, it was banned by radio stations in the USA due to the lyrical controversy, and I think it really wasn't a fact that the lyrics were controversial, it was just a sore subject for people to have to confront. Sadly, Tony Bellamy on guitar here died in 2009, and just months later, Lolly died in 2010. Pat is still touring or would be playing live without the coronavirus situation that we have at the moment, where he plays his original material as well as the Red Bone Classics. They were inducted into the Native American Music Association Hall of Fame in 2008 as a band, as well as the New York Smithsonian in 2013. Also, just to mention that Pat did receive the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Indigenous Music Awards in 2018. It's great to have a look at these guys back in 1974, just nailing this live performance with everything that you want to hear from that record, all of the groove, all of the feel in a live setup, just executed expertly. Thank you guys so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!